Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and welcome to the newest installment of my Pokemon Types Then vs. Now series, where I go over the history and changes that a certain Pokemon type has gone through over the course of the main series Pokemon games. This episode is focusing on the Fighting type, a type that has changed quite a bit more than I realized before starting my research. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, pretty place! Thank you! And let's dive in, starting with Gen 1, where the fighting type was not good. This was the fighting's type chart in Gen 1. On the offensive side, it had the nice benefit of being the only type super effective against normal, which is still the case today. Unfortunately, that wasn't super helpful for the fighting type because in Gen 1, all of the normal types were either really weak also flying type, or just so rarely encountered that you didn't get to take advantage of that advantage eh, very often. Fighting was also super effective against rock and ice, which was somewhat helpful but not instrumental since rock was also weak to the very common water and grass, while ice was very rare and usually attached to a water type. Then it was resisted by four types, which is quite a lot, and made worse by poison and flying's prevalence. And then, of course, it couldn't touch ghost types, aside from using Seismic Toss or Counter. Nowadays, Seismic Toss and Counter do not affect ghost types, but they did in Gen 1. Defensively, things were not that great either. It resisted Rock, which was nice, and then it resisted Bug. Unfortunately, the Bug type resistance was completely useless. See Bug types then versus now. However, it did lead to the fun fact that bug and fighting are the only two different types that resist each other. It was also weak to flying, which was somewhat abundant and weak to psychic. In other videos, I've talked my butt off about how the psychic type was so incredibly overpowered in generation one. So I'm not gonna go into details about that here. But the fact that the fighting type was weak to the strongest type in the game that was a staple of every team well, that's not good. The fully evolved fighting type Pokemon were Primeape, Poliwrath, Machamp, Hitmonlee, and Hitmonchan, with all but Poliwrath having very good physical attack. Machamp was the strongest of them all, having the highest base stat total, and tied with a few other Pokemon for the second highest attack stat in the game. But Poliwrath wasn't far behind in regards to total, having a more balanced spread. Their useful stats weren't really enough though, since their access to good fighting type moves was very limited. Which is weird because there were a lot of them. These are all the fighting type moves introduced in Gen 1, but several of them aren't as useful as they might seem. Karate Chop was a normal type move in Gen 1, which might be the dumbest thing in all all of Gen 1. Don't get me wrong, there's a ton of problems with Gen 1, but the fact that they made Karate Chop a normal type move when there is a fighting dojo led by the Karate Master is absurd. It's like making Water Gun a fire type move. Anyways, ignore Karate Chop on the list. It wasn't actually a fighting type option. Then High Jump Kick, Jump Kick, and Rolling Kick were signature moves of Hitmonlee, with none of the other fighting Pokemon getting them. Low Kick, which was not based on weight prior to Gen 3 and was in fact 50 base power and 90% accurate with a flinch chance, was only for the Machamp line in red and blue. But then Primeape got it in yellow. Double Kick was not Hitmonlee's signature move, but it was the only fighting type Pokemon to get it. The remaining moves are Counter, Seismic Toss, and Submission, two moves that do not actually deal fighting type damage, and one that's power of 80 does not justify its 80% accuracy and recoil damage. Say it with me, kids. If it's not 100% accurate, it's 50% accurate. The end result of this is that Hitmonchan and Poliwrath's only fighting type move options were Counter, Seismic Toss, and Submission, none of which I think to be good moves. And then a lot of the other fighting Pokemon didn't have very many other options. The only Pokemon that had a lot of options was freaking Hitmonlee. All fighting type moves in Gen 1 and 2 and 3 before the physical special split in Gen 4 were physical attacks, which to me makes perfect sense. Fighting is basically the mascot type for physical moves. The first fighting specialist was the Karate Master who didn't get a name until later generations, but would be called Kyo or Koichi depending on the game and also would be called the Karate Master or the Karate King, depending on the game. I don't know why they made it so confusing, but like, 
it was confusing. There was also the Elite Four member Bruno, who for some reason had two Onyxes instead of Primeape and Polyrath. I don't really understand that decision. I get that Onyx is big and strong and intimidating looking like Bruno, but in reality, it's extremely freaking weak. It's got a lower attack stat than Piplup, so like, why not just give him Polyrath and Primeape? Also a fun piece of trivia, and that is that the fighting type is the only type of all of them to have a gym leader or elite four member specialist in every single generation. This will become apparent as I go over the specialists as we go along, but I thought it'd be fun to mention it up front. So in gen one, the fighting type was a low tier type. It didn't have access to a lot of good moves. It wasn't that necessary to beat the types that it was strong against and it was weak to the strongest type in the game. But then Gen 2 came along and really buffed the fighting type by adding two new types that fighting was strong against. This became the new type chart for the fighting type in Generation 2. The new Dark and Steel type were both weak to fighting, and while fighting didn't gain a resistance to steel, it did gain one to Dark. The two new types were added primarily to nerf the overpowered Steel type, but they also had the secondary effect of buffing, pun intended, the fighting type. Fighting went from being strong against three types to five, which is tied with ground for the most of all types. And one of the types it's strong against is the near unbreakable wall of the steel type. Fighting became a super important type to have around because it was one of the few that could deal with the really tough to take down steel types. Not many fighting type Pokemon were added, the only fully evolved ones being Heracross and Hitmontop, but Heracross especially was pretty strong with a really high attack stat. But while not many new fighting type Pokemon were added, the previous Gen 1 fighting types got a real benefit in Gen 2 not just from the type chart changing, but also from getting access to new moves. A lot more fighting moves were added, plus Karate Chop actually became a fighting move. A lot of these moves were either too weak or too inaccurate for my taste, but it was certainly an improvement over generation one. Side note, this just occurred to me while filming this video. Why are Mega Punch and Mega Kick still not fighting moves? Like Karate Chop was like the most important one to make fighting because the Karate Master thing, but like Mega Punch and Mega Kick are very fighting. They're punches and kicks. Look at all the other punches and kicks that are fighting moves. Anyways, most of the new fighting type moves in Gen 2 went to Machamp, further cementing it as the best fighting type Pokemon available. It's especially useful in the Johto games if you get the in-game trade one, Macho, which I highly recommend, I've done it before. It's super useful, both against Whitney and just the rest of the game. The new fighting specialist was the Johto gym leader, Chuck, who uses only Primeape and Polyrath, the two Kanto fighting types Bruno didn't use in the Elite Four in Gen 1. Speaking of Bruno, he was still around, swapping one of his Onyxes for a Hitmontop. Gen 2 took the fighting type for being a type definitely in the lower half to one of the better ones. Then Gen 3 came along and improved it even further, which is, a weird thing to say, I feel like Gen 3 didn't do much of anything for most types, but then fighting, it buffed it even more. The type chart didn't change, but it added a lot of good new moves and several good new Pokemon. The new fully evolved Pokemon were Blaziken, Breloom, Hariyama, and Medicham. Of these, Blaziken would go on to make the biggest impact, especially once getting its hidden ability speed boost. But Breloom was also quite good especially once the physical special split happened and it could actually utilize its massive attack stat for grass moves. And then most of the new fighting type moves were quite good. Arm thrust wasn't super helpful. It's more of an early game, lower level move, but then you move on to brick break, which I love being a reliable 100% accurate move with no drawbacks. Bulk up is a great boosting move. Focus punch can be devastating if you use the right strategy. Revenge can be really powerful and is especially useful on slower, bulkier fighting types. Sky Uppercut isn't 100% accurate, which means it's 50% accurate, yeah, I get it, but it's still really useful. And Super Power can really devastate some enemy Pokemon, especially once Pokemon with Contrary get it in later generations. 
weapons. Almost every new fighting type move is at least somewhat useful, which to me is really impressive, especially considering the sucky move situation for the fighting type in Gen 1. The fighting specialist in Gen 3 was Brawly, the Duford Town Gym Leader. He is notable because I had to level up my Grovile 10 levels above his Makuhita to beat him, my first ever run of Ruby as a child, so. Yeah, that was annoying. So Gen 3 happened and the fighting type loved it. Then Gen 4 happened where the devs were like, oh, hey, fighting type. You know how we gave you a lot of really strong new Pokemon and really good new moves? Here's even more. Infernape, Lucario, Toxicroak, and Gallade were added, all being at least decently strong, but Infernape and Lucario would go on to make the biggest impact. Fun fact I can mention now that I've introduced Lucario, and that is that every single fighting type gym leader or elite four member, of which there is one for every generation, uses a Machamp or Lucario on at least one of their teams, which is crazy. Gen four also brought the physical special split, so now special physical attacks could exist. However, a fun quirk about the fighting type is that none of its previous generation moves changed categorization when the split happened. Every fighting type move introduced in gens one through three started physical and remained physical after the split. The only other type to have none of its moves change categorization is the psychic type where all of its moves were special beforehand and stayed special after the start of Gen 4. So since all the old fighting moves were still physical, they needed to add some special fighting type moves. So they did, along with a lot of other really good physical fighting moves. Aura Sphere, Focus Blast, and Vacuum Wave were the three new special fighting moves. Aura Sphere was mainly for Lucario, but a few other Pokemon could learn it, and a lot more could learn it once it was made a TR in Gen 8. Focus Blast would be learned by a lot of Pokemon and would be really devastating when it hit. You know, once every few weeks. Vacuum Wave is a priority move like Quick Attack or Mach Punch and is actually the only special 40 power priority move. As for the physical moves, Close Combat is, to this day, the best fighting type move in my opinion. It's super strong, 100% accurate, and while it has the drawback of lowering the user's defense and special defense, that added frailty can be worked around if the user is already fast and strong enough to OCO the target. Drain Punch was a nice alternative to Brick Break, Force Palm a nice middle road move, Hammer Arm up pretty good for already slow Pokemon move, and Wake Up Slap being a solid move with an odd situational effect. The fighting specialist was Mei Lin, the gym leader of Veilstone City, and finally one that wasn't just some meathead jock dude. Gen 4 continued the trend of improving the fighting type, and Gen 5 did not stop that trend. While it didn't add really any super useful fighting type moves, it added a lot of really buff, pun intended, fighting type Pokemon. The new fully evolved ones were Embor, the third and thankfully final firefighting starter, Conkelder, Throw, Sock, Scrafty, Mianxiao, Cobalion, Terrakian, Verizian, Keldeo, and Meloetta's pirouette form. The last five were the first fighting type legendaries, and Keldeo and Meloetta were the first fighting type mythical Pokemon. Well, Meloetta was only fighting type some of the time, but you get the gist. Of all these Pokemon, most would go on to make some kind of impact on one competitive format or the other, aside from Embor, Throw, and the Mythicals, because the Mythicals were banned, at least in my personal experience. From what I've seen, Conkelder and the Swords of Justice make the biggest impacts. As I mentioned, most of the new fighting moves were not very impactful. The best one, Sacred Sword, was only for the Swords of Justice at the time, and even then, most of them would still just run close combat. The fighting specialist was Marshall, the Elite Four member, and the Unova trainer that I think would have the best chance to defeat Iris and become the next Unova champion. I talked about this in my The New Pokemon Champions video, and you should totally watch it. Since the start of Gen 2, the fighting type had just been continuously improving throughout each generation getting a better type chart, a lot of great new moves, and a lot of strong new Pokemon. But then Gen 6 came along, and the devs finally decided it was time to knock the fighting type down a peg. Sort of. This became the new, and current to this day, type chart for the fighting type. The new fairy type both resisted fighting and was super effective against it, making the fighting type once again weak to the best type in the game, just like it being weak to Psychic in Gen 1. 
Fairy is not as overpowered as Psychic was back in Gen 1 though, so this was not a death blow to the fighting type. It's still really useful against the five whole types it's strong against, when it's still the only type that's strong against normal, which back in Gen 1 wasn't that helpful, but nowadays with all the generations that have gone by, there's a lot of really strong normal type Pokemon for which fighting types are the only ones that can handle. Plus, it's still one of the few types good against Steel, which is another one of the best types in the game. The new fighting moves were few. Only Flying Press, Halucha's move, which is actually both fighting and flying, Mat Block, which is only useful in doubles or triples, and Power Up Punch, a boosting move that can really snowball a Pokemon's power. It got a lot of use on Mega Kangaskhan, the Pokemon that always hit twice, so it could double its attack stat in one turn while attacking in the process. The new fighting Pokemon were Chestnut, Pangoro, and Halucha. None of them were super game changing, but I really like Halucha. Fighting was actually the last type to be combined with flying, with Halucha being the result. Well, I guess also, Fairy was combined with flying at the same time when they made Togetic and Togekiss Fairy flying, but like, Fighting was the last one of the ones that existed before Gen 6 to be combined with flying. So for the fighting type in Gen 6, its matchup chart got worse. It only got one useful new move and the new Pokemon were not that impressive. So why did I say that it was knocked down a peg sort of? Well, that's because of the Megas. Mega Heracross has an absurd attack stat. Mega Blaziken took the OP Speed Boost Blaziken and made it even stronger. Mega Metacham's ability Pure Power gives it the second highest attack stat of all Pokemon behind only Mega Mawile. Mega Lopunny is super fast and strong and can sweep through even ghosts thanks to Scrappy. Mega Gallade also hits insanely hard. Mega Lucario has massive physical and special attack made even stronger thanks to adaptability which increases its stab multiplier from 1.5 to two times. It was banned to Ubers, as was, of course, the final fighting Mega, Mega Mewtwo X. It is tied with the other Mega Mewtwo and Mega Rayquaza for the highest base stat total of all usable Pokemon with an absurd 780. The fighting types Megas were stacked. So while the addition of the fairy type was not great for the fighting type, the new Mega still made it a very strong type. The fighting type specialist was the Shalor City Gym Leader, Karina, who is also the Mega Evolution successor, who also annoyingly never uses her Mega Lucario outside of that Mega Lucario versus Mega Lucario battle, which is super dumb. Why did they not implement Gym Leader rematches? What were X and Y? Gen 7 came along and added a few more strong fighting type Pokemon, but that was basically it. The only new fighting type move was All Out Pummeling, the fighting type Z move, so that doesn't really even count. The new fully evolved fighting Pokemon were Crabominable, Beware, Passimian, kamo o Buzzswole, Feramosa, and Marshadow. The last four are the most important. kamo o was the first and only so far fighting type pseudo legend. So it's strong, but not as good as a lot of the other pseudo legends. Buzzswool was pretty good, but held back somewhat by its speed and special defense. Feromosa is super frail, but it is so fast and hits so hard that it was banned to Ubers and Smog on singles. Marshadow is incredibly powerful, with its ghost fighting stab combo hitting every existing Pokemon for at least neutral damage. The only type combo that it can't do that to is Ghost Normal, a type combo that doesn't exist yet. I love Marshadow, but it doesn't get to see a whole lot of use because it's a mythical Pokemon. So not only is it really hard to obtain, it's banned in most formats. I honestly wish Marshadow was a bit weaker and not mythical because I really love it and would want to use it. The fighting specialist was Hala, the Kahuna of Melee Melee Island, then Elite Four member, but only in Sun and Moon. And then we reach generation eight, present day. This gen did remove mega evolutions, which the fighting type certainly did not appreciate, but the new max move for the fighting type is arguably the best one of all of them. It also got some other nice new moves, but most importantly, in my opinion, several sweet new Pokemon. Grappaloct, Surfetched, Phalanx, Zamazenta, the Urshifus, and Galarian Zapdos are the new fully evolved fighting type Pokemon. 
Zamazenta's crown form is obviously OP, and the Urshifus and Zapdos, I believe, are pretty freaking good in the competitive scene. But who cares about that because Grappaloct and Phalanx are two of my favorite Pokemon of all time. They're so cool. They're not that great in the competitive scene, but who cares because they're so awesome. Also, I really like Surfetched and Galarian Zapdos. Can I just say they nailed fighting type Pokemon designs in this gen. Also, there were three Gigantamax forms, Gigantamax Machamp and a Gigantamax form for each Urshifu form. These are all the new fighting type moves. Body Press is actually a really good move using the defense stat instead of the attack stat, but it's actually more used by non-fighting type tank Pokemon. Body Press is really useful for a Pokemon with really high defense, and most fighting type Pokemon have really high attack, so it makes more sense for them to use normal physical moves. Coaching is a doubles only support move. G-Max Chi Strike is Gigantamax Machamp's move, but it is worse than regular Max Knuckle, one of the best Max moves due to boosting the ally's side physical attack. Basically an extra powerful power-up punch that can benefit your partner too. The next four moves are signature moves of new Pokemon, the best of which is Galarian Zapdos' Thunderous Kick. The fighting specialist is B, the Stoan side gym leader in Pokemon Sword. Mustard was also a fighting gym leader many years in the past before becoming champion. So in the end, the fighting type started not that great, but really grew and grew to become an extremely useful type that I think is important to have on darn near every team. I certainly aim to have one on every team and I suggest you do too. Thanks so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, we give ends. Gotta catch them all.